Uh, this week, the topic we will discuss is the uh, AFM Imaging in situ. Uh, when we say in situ, uh, we cover a lot of situations, not just imaging in liquid, but also imaging when the sample is in a different kind of uh, environmental variations, like temperatures or like exposure to different gas. The the atomic force microscope compared to the, the other high resolution instruments, uh, it has a one unique feature, which is it, it could image a sample while the sample is uh, positioned inside a liquid. Uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, people who are not e experiencing in AFM imaging or thinking you could image a molecule while the molecule is in liquid, this is not exactly accurate. What's accurate description is that the imaging uh, still did not change. The tip is touching the sample. The sample has to be on a solid. However, the solid surface of the sample could be exposed to liquid. So you're still imaging a solid sample, but the environment could be in the liquid. So when we try to uh, scan a sample in liquid, uh, there's a lot of things could happen compared to air imaging. You could deal with a different optical index of the liquid, and then you could cause could deal with a, your liquid that is not very clear. You have particles in liquid, and then uh, is also the when you have uh, cold water that's saturated with uh, dissolved air or nitrogen, could, could you could observe some kind of bubbles, and the fluid imaging also cause a little bit more com complications in tapping mode oscillation. And the, the fluid could also evaporate fast. The viscosity of the fluid could also cause complications. So there's other, a lot of other things happening when we're imaging something in liquid. Now, there's, of course, there's benefit of imaging in fluid. Uh, here, what I drawn here are two force curves using contact mode of on a sample in liquid compared to in air. When you imaging, when you do a force curve in air, the you often observe a relatively large pull-up force. This force is what we call the capillary force. Capillary force is a force attraction between the tip and sample cause, we believe is the condensation of water molecules on the surface of a sample. Sometimes even it is a single molecule, single layer could cause a strong capillary force or adhesion force. When you put the entire sample and then your imaging and everything, the tip in the liquid, this force disappears. So in other words, in air, the contact mode force is always has a certain minimum amount of force. Uh, the force cannot be lower than this adhesion force. However, when you're imaging sample in liquid, this force drop to zero, and therefore the force is only provided by your deflection of the cantilever. So you can reduce the force to near zero. That can increase your resolution, actually. This is the example of such uh, uh, increase of resolution. This is a style self assembled monolayer imaged in uh, ethanol. I believe it's ethanol. And then uh, you can minimize their force to a point that tip does not in interrupt with the uh, rigidity of the soft matter of uh, softer nature of your self cell molecule. And therefore you could actually uh, push the resolution to near molecular resolution. On the upper right corner, it's a four, 40 by 40 nanometer scan and you can see the molecular arrays of the self cell monolayer. In air, you do not see this kind of high resolution. Now, when we use um, the uh, soft cantilever imaging in, in, in fluid, you could uh, you could also, uh, because the, your cantilever is so soft, you could uh, scan fast by using what we call a constant height mode in, in, in a replace of constant force mode, constant height mode. Uh, it's basically you just uh, don't rely on the feedback to uh, to sense the topography instead of using the deflection to sense the topography. The operation is very simple. You just reduce your uh, feedback integral gain to near zero, not exactly zero, near zero, zero point something, and scan fast. 
This way, you could scan the surface and then uh, acquire the deflection channel as your imaging channel. What's benefit is that you can actually uh, take the feedback loop out of the speed limitation, and then you can e image the sample real fast. And why do you want to e imaging the sample real fast? Uh, that's because uh, sometimes you want to capture the chemical reaction, and then scan fast can capture it better. Uh, some examples, this is uh, in sulfuric acid and copper sulfate, and you control the potential of your sample substrate and then cause the uh, copper to deposit on the surface of the gold thin films. And then you can see the growth of these crystals in situ by control the potentials. This is a constant dissolved calci cal calcium carbonate. And then uh, basically you scan really fast and then, then uh, drip, uh, as you scan and you you uh, put a drop of water, actually put a drop of water and scan in constant height mode, and then you can see the dissolve of this um, of this uh, calcite crystal. A lot of fun to observe this chemical reactions. Um, in a lot of times when you study uh, biological molecules or biological samples, in this case, uh, living cells, you have to image something in liquid. This is a live endothelial cell. This cell is very soft. When you scan something that's very soft and living cell, it has to be in a, a physiological conditions. You have to keep the cell alive, not dehydrated. And, and then uh, you can use contact mode to image a living uh, organic biological species. And then liquid imaging is that actually is very essential. In, in this particular case, uh, as I mentioned before in previous presentations, uh, it is very key that that your, your tip is not very sharp. The tip has to be slightly polished using uh, scanning on a silicon surface. So uh, because uh, a very sharp tip will actually disturb the biological soft samples. And this scan size is a near 100 by 100 microns and the sharp tip does not benefit you anyways. Uh, I need to mention some of the uh, advanced imaging modes that uh, uh, Agen developed. In this case, the um, magnetic driven AC mode. Um, when we start, when we oscillate the tip using uh, a piezo driver, the piezo not only oscillates the tip, it also oscillates your ambient environment. In other words, it's caused a lot of syndication of the uh, uh, of the of your sample, and then we could use a uh, cantilever that is coated with magnetic material, and using a solenoid coil, uh, drive a uh, alternating magnetic field, cause the tip to, to oscillate, and then using this oscillation to do basic tapping. It's what we call a mag mode. Um, that that has a certain benefit of imaging something that's very soft. Okay. So here, um, I put in here down below it shows you the uh, the resonant frequency described in two different oscillations. This is the biggest dif difference is that uh, when you're using the uh, normal tapping driven by piezo oscillation, quite often you see a lot of peaks, uh, multiple peaks. These multiple peaks is, are, are, sometimes it's very confusing and you don't know which peak to pick. Normally I would suggest pick a sharp and lower peak. And then uh, if you have a peak that is sharper and then compare all the sharp peaks and then pick the one that's tall and low. And that's when you pick. And I, I'm not against you pick other peaks and try to see that do they work too. Sometimes other peaks will work too. Now, when you do magnetic-driven uh, AC mode, you don't have this water anymore because uh, there's only one peak. And any uh, frequency from lower to high will work, no problem. Yeah, so as the tip oscillates up and down, it will disrupt a lot of these um, molecules there. And then the entire oscillation situation will change when the tip is closed in proximity to the sample surface. And when that happens, your peak is actually sometimes shifts. So be atten pay attention to that, that uh, the uh, when you, during approach, you probably should do multiple 
a frequency sweep and multiple tunings and to make sure that uh, yes the the uh, the the, uh, the peak is still there when you get close to the sample yes the tip peak has sometimes even shift out of the range and then you do a couple of more tunings during the approach uh, one thing I will mention is that uh, when you do fluid imaging, it is very important for you to pay attention to we could have sample immobilization. In other words, the sample cannot be sample has to be anchored to the surface of a substrate, and uh, it cannot be washed away by your fluid. It's called a sample immobilization. There's many immobilization techniques uh, for uh, microsurface. Uh, sometimes you can use the electrostatic charge. Microsurface is always charged, uh, negative. And then if you have a sample that's positive, the uh, sample and tip will naturally attract to each other. Uh, gold surface is a very versatile substrate. And then you could use a lot of chemistry to do immobilization uh, technique on the gold surface using uh, chemical bounds. But, uh, microsurface can also be using a self xamarin layer formed by sil siloxane molecules. And these siloxane molecules can, can also be used to uh, change the surface charge from negative to positive in order to suit it to a different kind of molecules. Uh, I will not go too much details in into this topic because I already covered in previous um, presentation. And then you can see, uh, you can look, go to the, the YouTube channel and then there's recordings of, of more details of this topic of immobilization. Basically, your sample has to be fixed on the sample, fixed on the substrate. We we'll either, either use electrostatic force or, uh, or a covalent bound. So I'm going to skip over this, of these different techniques. So um, liquid imaging gives you lots of uh, advantages. It can increase your resolution. It can also, uh, um, uh, because of your liquid existence, you can introduce different kinds of chemical reactions. So I'm going to, using the rest of time, show you various examples. This is what a liquid cell looks like on your uh, 5500 AFM and different AFM will have different uh, constructions and design of the liquid cell. Uh, I meant to put the in-situ there. So this this first movie is actually not in liquid. This is actually a Kelvin force microscopy image of a charge that's deposited on surface. And this image is actually in not in liquid, but in humid air. Uh, just just show you the, the in-situ reaction, in-situ observation, observation of a reaction. Uh, this is a movie generated using the easy deposition of a copper surface of a copper copper crystals. <clears throat> the surface is gold. So this image is obtained while the sample is inside copper sulfate and sulfuric acid. Okay, and and then as we uh, reduce the potential on the sample substrate, the copper cation started to to uh, obtain an a, uh, electron and then become a copper metal. It'll form a crystal on the surface. This is electroplating. And then as you can see, as you uh, further decrease the um, surface potential, the crystal started to grow bigger and then growing bigger and started to form layers. And this is a, a in-situ imaging of electrochemistry uh, reactions. Uh, this is a dissolving reaction of a self zamonolia SAM stands for self zambod monolia. Here we have a little square there. This, this little square is deposited on the surface using the tip and the different uh, self, self zamonolia molecules. In this case, is a, a 22 carbon thiol, self zamonolia deposit using the tip assistance. This, this uh, formation of the square is, is, is done using a technique called nanografting. And uh, this image is obtained in uh, ethanol. And then I used an IV to drip ethanol into the liquid cell because ethanol will gradually slowly evaporate. And as the time progresses, you can see the cell of the ammonia started to break down and dissolve. 
And this self-examine one layer generally using nanografting is actually dissolved the last because it's actually generally much higher density self-examine one layer. Okay. I also pay attention to the time. Uh, it's look at the time, 140 hours, 170 or 250 hours. That's 10 days of experiment that keep dripping ethanol into, into the liquid cell and observing chemical reaction as it happens. Uh, this is the movie version of the calcite dissolve in acetic water. And again, this scan is relatively fast. Uh, I use constant height mode because I want to scan it all fast. Constant height mode, uh, take the feedback speed away from the equation when you push the speed. So if you look at the, the block, the dimension block, the other upper, upper corner, it says X is 1.81 micron, Y is 1.81 micron. That's a scan size. Now notice the Z is 0 0.0266 volts. It's not nanometer, not micron, it's volts. That's because the Z is actually not height image. The Z is, uh, is deflection image. And this deflection is not calibrated. It's uh, for, the, for the sake of speed, scanning speed, instead of for the sake of accuracy. It's not accurate because uh, when you scan that fast, the speed and your signal output is actually uh, will in impact each other. Okay. So this is uh, an example of a, a uh, chemical reaction happening in water. Uh, it's uh, when you when you expose water to the air, water will absorb carbon dioxide and then it turn into carbolic uh, acid, which is slightly acidic, and that is the acid that dissolves your uh, um, calcite. It's a fun experiment to do. Uh, here's another calcite sample, and this calcite has a much more uh, defect. It is a less ordered calcite sample. Again, uh, the setting is very much the same. You scan the surface, uh, and then uh, I think this one I did not use constant high mode. I used the, the, the constant force mode, that regular imaging mode. And this uh, experiment lasted probably one an hour. The upper right corner is uh, data is processed with a technique called histogram. You can see it's atomic steps, actually, uh, uh, separations, uh, because these peaks are atomic steps. The one lower is the, uh, the, the profile image, profile output. Now, I should mention that um, in situ, is not just imaging in water. It also includes a lot of changings of other environmental factors of your sample. These environmental factors could be include a lot of things, anything you could happen to the sample. If it caused the chemical or physical reaction to the sample, can be used as an in-situ uh, in imaging kind of independent variable. In this case, we could also control the temperature of the sample. This is an uh, in situ observation of transition temperature of a um, polymer sample. Here is PMMA and P PS blend. These two uh, polymer has uh, different slightly different height. And after the blend is created, it's annealed. So the two polymers actually they cause a phase separation. So you can see there's grain structures. Now, at 200 to 250, 212 to 215 degrees C, high temperature, you can see the two, two uh, faces of polymer start to blend into each other. At about 250 degrees C, this polymer, these two faces will merge into one. So we're observing a transition. And notice the center image, uh, not one temperature, but two temperatures, 212 to 215 degrees C. That's because the Image, uh, image. It takes time, and then as the, the as the scan from top to bottom, the temperature actually is changing right in the middle. So this is uh, the in situ image of temperature as it changes. We did not stop the heating; we continued the heating, and then observe the uh, phase transition. Uh, here is a self assemble monolayer self assembling reaction. This is uh, called octadecode macaptan. It's uh, eight, 18 uh, carbon 
file server time model here. Here we have a little knight's neat hole here. That's because we're using AFM tip to uh, scratch away part of the, the sample. Here, when you when you start when you use the AFM contact mode, uh, you have one very interesting benefit is when you're imaging something with contact mode, you have a direct control of the force. Increase the set point, you increase the force. Decrease the set point, it decreases the force. You decrease the set point when the, at the moment the tip of the sample is separate, that's the, the moment you reach the zero force. Okay, so you can actually much uh, control the force much more accurate, much more direct. In this case, you control the force so the, the tip scan over the sample and then, and then you scratch away a little square which exposed the gold substrate. And after that, a small dose of dodecan mercaptan was injected into the liquid cell. The liquid cell is always filled with uh, uh, ethanol. And you can see the cell of the ammonia started form inside this hole on the surface and it healed itself. Uh, fun to do. That's a, you heal a hole that you just created. Uh, this is a in situ observation of a self only of C18 on the gold surface. Okay, so here I use black and white, and then on the right hand side you have the uh, the profile study. Uh, these little steps, these are atomic steps, and uh, at uh, time zero you can see the gold surface. And gold surface is, was never very clean always have contamination. So you can see this white dot is actually a piece of contamination. And then at image C, you can see the surface somehow is coated with a thin layer. And then measure the trench here. You notice that the height of this, the thickness of this uh, cell for time on layer, the thickness of this layer is about the thickness of this molecule when it is lie down. We call it the lie down phase. At another time, eight minutes, you can see a lot of either white dots that appear, and these white dots are very tall. They're about 2.5 nanometers. That is uh, that is consistent with the molecule that we put in when the molecules are standing up. So we're observing the molecule transition from light down to standing up. This transition is, uh, I think, is the first time being observed using atomic force microscope in organic solvent. And uh, I published this one in 1997. Uh, this is a block copolymer exposure to toluene vapor. This is uh, exposure to vapor, organic vapor, caused the, one of the face of the two faces of block copolymer to swell up. And then this is not in liquid, not not uh, entirely in air, but in, in the organic vapor. And you can see that the of the face started to the the surface of the sample started to increase its roughness. Uh, below there are two histograms here, and one shows sixty angstroms of uh, spread. Before that is a forty angstrom spread. It's quantitative analysis of this face square when the blood copolymer exposure to toluene. Uh, this is a data by Stone Lindsay's group, and this is a, a melting of. Um, DNA complex when we inject salt water. Uh, this is a potential control, you, uh, and then uh, observe the sample using the scanning tunneling microscope. And then here, the gold one one surface was experiencing a reconstruction when when we control the potential of the sample. And you can see upper right corner a large area scan. You have these hair bone structures. The similar thing can be observed when you uh, you have a piece of circle substrate. You could also image it with AFM, and then uh, you could anneal the surface with uh, hydrogen flame. And then as you observe, you can see that the surface of the gold will start to form this little interesting herobone structures. That's the reaction happening at the, as you observe as it happens. Uh, this is the construction of a electrochemical cell. Uh, this is a single layer deposition of copper on the surface of gold, and which caused the uh, the atomic lattice to change from 2.9 angstrom to about 5 angstrom. And this, this is the in-situ chemical reaction that chemical uh, and caused in the potential deposition called UPD. 
we have already seen that uh, the copper bulk deposition observed using AFM. And um, this is almost 30 minutes. And thank you for your time. And this is, I just presented this time a lot of these uh, in situ chemical reactions. You can you can observe in situ using atomic force microscope. And then in situ study is not an easy task. There's a lot of things involved. But um, uh, if you can observe something happening in real time, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's very interesting and, and a lot of fun to do. Uh, one thing to pay attention is that you do need to choose a chemical reaction or physical reaction that is slower than your scanning frame rate. So if you take 20 seconds to a minute to scan an image, your chemical reaction should be, you should observe chemical reactions slower than, let's say, several minutes to hours. And if anything happened faster than that, you don't see it. It's uh, you, you just capture the result. And uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and again, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you could unmute yourself and uh, ask uh, ask us. Okay, I see someone's on the chat. Okay, it's a uh, case to everyone. I wish I had known about institute scanning of annealing block copolymer during my PhD research. Yes, uh, annealing of a block copolymer. Uh, you can see a lot of these happenings. I have done a lot of these experiments. And uh, in, a, in, in one case, I increased the temperature all the way to 250 degrees C. And a lot of things happen uh, when you anneal above 150 degrees C. And then, yes, that uh, uh, in one experiment, I observed the crystallization of a block called polymer, which is uh, very interesting to see. You can actually see a lot of the, the grains start to form. Let me see if I have, if I can open a file and show it to you. Yes, some of the old talks have. Um, Interesting results. It takes a couple of seconds to open some of the old files. These still have Agilent's marking on it. Uh, it is. Yeah, this is a PLA block copolymer, and you can see the topography versus temperature. This is 25 to 26 degrees. See, temperature is gra gradually rising, 46, 61 degrees, 66 degrees. You can see that the, the, the one of the phase status swell up and become bigger, 68 degrees, even bigger, 71 degrees. And 76 degrees, you can see a lot of crystals start to form. 84 degrees, more crystals start to form. 97 degrees, that's uh, uh, the crystals start to form even higher. And, and this is 105 degrees C. And this is 105 degrees C. We actually went home, I went to hotel, come back, and 10 hours later, uh, it's all formed crystals. So yes, the um, the... You can do a lot of with with this annealing. Uh, the, you can see that the things happening in real time. The okay, next question is: Hi Song, what are some steps to control the z-direction drift in STM mode? Um, there are different source of drift, and uh, you you have to isolate and get 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 all these drift uh, the reasons of the drift. For example, if it's a thermal drift. Um, you don't have a lot of control over thermal drift. You just have to wait a little bit until it stabilizes. 
And if the sample itself is drifting taller, you have to look at the sample and make sure it is firmly attached to the substrate. For example, you, you cannot use a double side tape to fix your sample on this on the surface when you do STM. Of course you can, but the the uh, uh, soft double side tape is a, a very important source of drift. So if you're using a hard contact, using a spring loaded clip to push the sample down to a hard surface, that'll get rid of the uh, Z drift. And then sometimes you cannot avoid a drift, you have to compensate the, the drift. In other words, uh, um, you should uh, uh, put your uh, put your uh, open your motor tab, and then and then using the motor click to increase or decrease the sample height to com compensate for the drift. Uh, if you're talking about the drift when you are performing high temperature, uh, here is a reason that uh, there is actually a patented technology invented by I think by Tianwei of Azure was a molecular imaging, is that this uh, sample stage, the thermal stage, is, is uh, expansion compensated. In other words, this design structure actually um, will, it will expand down to counter the upswing drift from the, the, uh, the sample heating itself. So in other words, uh, this structure can also, um, uh, the structure also counters your drift like that. Answer your question. Yeah, so so in using this structure, you can you can observe atomic resolution at uh, over 100 degrees C. Okay, if you run out of questions, I'm going to stop the uh, recording and turn off the share, and we can still chat.